Assemble! Stay dandy, baby. Greetings, my friends. I'm the Ace Guru, and big surprise, I'm not dead. I'm actually here to check out the brand new Gundam anime series, Gundam Build Divers Re-Rise. The brand new Gundam anime project, which has been made to celebrate the 40th anniversary of the greatest mecha franchise of all time. Anyone who knows me knows that I love Gundam. It's one of my absolute favorite anime franchises of all time. It's one that I grew up watching on Toonami back in the day. The days where I used to watch Dragon Dragon Ball Z and Gundam Wing. I didn't know it at the time, but I was just beginning my stages of becoming a massive Gundam fan. Fast forward years later and I have a massive DVD collection of pretty much every single series in the franchise. And one of the best things about the Gundam build subset of Gundam is that it's sort of like a celebration of the entire thing. There's callbacks, there's all of these homages, and even they bring in straight up old characters from all of the original shows and insert them into this show, which essentially just transforms into this margarita orgy of the best things that the Gundam franchise can muster. And I've made it very clear in the past that I really do love Gundam. Gundam Build Fighters. I'm not exactly the biggest fan of all of the sequels. I think the very first season Gundam Build Fighters was perfect in my opinion. It's the type of series that I've said multiple times had no right to be as good as it actually was. Having characters that were surprisingly enduring amazing action sequences and a story that didn't take itself too seriously, especially when compared to a lot of the other Gundam anime series. And then we had a lot of sequels. We had Gundam Build Fighters Try, which I still think was good, but still couldn't quite live up to the amazing epicness that was the first season. And then most recently, we got Gundam Build Divers. And anyone who watched my review of that series know that I wasn't really the biggest fan of it. Sure, I still loved the mecha design and all of the callbacks to the original Gundam anime and all of its sequels, but something felt missing. It felt kind of, dare I say, soulless. And hopefully this brand new sequel can sort of rectify all of the problems that we saw in the last show. And with that in mind, let's go ahead and talk about this brand new one, Gundam Build Divers Re-Rise, which is actually a direct sequel to Gundam Build Divers. This is either going to be a really good thing or a really bad thing. But I can honestly say the first two episodes are actually pretty damn good. So let's get one thing straight. Gundam Build Divers Re-Rise is not going to be a revolution in anime. It's not going to reinvent the Gundam wheel, so to speak. However, I do have a feeling that it is certainly going to refine the formula that was created in Gundam Build Divers. This is basically the same exact world taking place in a futuristic setting where people actually know about the Gundam anime franchise and they love building the model kits. And they're able to take these model kits into this online world known as the Gundam Battle Nexus where they can have battles and go on adventures and form friendships that last forever or even fight against crazy viruses which threaten to destroy the Gundam Battle Nexus itself. This was all firmly established in the last season. This one is set two years after the events of that series. Thankfully, this season has brand new characters. I did not like the main cast from Gundam Build Divers. I felt that they were soulless and I thought that the main character of Riku might be my least favorite Gundam protagonist of all time. There was nothing to his character when it came to motivation. He was just a dumb, happy kid who liked giant robots. That was really all there was to his character. Yes, he had a little bit of motivation towards the end of wanting to save his brand new friend, Sarah, but really there wasn't much to his character. And the fact of the matter is, it was made up of a group of all of these kids who were way too damn good at battling with Gundam, despite the fact that they were really new at it. This series, on the other hand, introduces us to a ragtag group of characters who are a little more experienced and all have very unique things going for them. This story is actually set two years later and it follows this one character who goes by the name of Hiroto. And Hiroto is immediately different and way more interesting than Riku. He's a little darker, a little edgier, he's essentially the shadow hedgehog of the Gundam build franchise. But he's also a lot more interesting in terms of what his motivation is going to be, and of course he has the interesting hook of having a mystery as to why he's going into this Gundam world in the first place. Apparently he is trying to find some old friend that he made in this world all these years ago, this mysterious blonde girl who may or may not be related to characters from the previous season. It's all still completely up in the air. The interesting thing about Hiroto is that he's a lone wolf. He works by himself. He works with other groups independently, mostly for the glory, but also to try and get some answers and help him on his quest. However, throughout the course of the first two episodes, he's introduced to a group of brand new characters who, like him, 
him are a little weird, a little strange, and can't really seem to form their very own teams. In many ways, very much like Hiroto, they are lone wolves. They're the outcasts, so to speak. And due to some crazy event of the Gundam world getting a massive update with all of these crazy story campaigns getting added to the game, they all end up joining together and forming their very own battle group, which is known as the Bill Divers. Which, yes, is the same name as the one from the previous season, but now it's got a lowercase i. Not the cleverest of things, but it is an excuse to bring these characters together and to introduce them into this brand new world. I say brand new world because one of the most interesting things about this show is that it's basically an isekai within an isekai. It's isekai-ception, insert Christopher Nolan horn here. What this means is that these kids in the real world are actually going to this virtual world and then they actually enter this campaign which takes place in this world with these fictional NPCs which are incredibly lifelike and if you're a furry you're actually going to love these characters. They're basically just a bunch of anthropomorphic animal people and they're battling against some weird evil mysterious force and they need the help of the gunpla battlers. And that's where Hiroto and all of these different characters come in as they show off their brand new Gundam mecha as they decide to take take down this evil, mysterious force, and really that's it. The first two episodes are essentially just establishing who these characters are, but unlike Gundam Build Divers, we don't know much about them, and interestingly, these characters don't know each other as well, and this is going to serve as sort of a foundation for actually giving them characterization. I know, characterization in Gundam Build Divers! Crazy concept, right? To me, that's honestly what has me most excited to see what's actually going to happen in this series. That and, of course, getting to see a lot of crazy robot action, which, of course, you're going to get to see a lot of that. And that's really what I want to talk about next, which is all of the main characters' Gundams, which, that's the thing that most people send to characters about the most, with Hiroto having a very unique Gundam known as the Core Gundam, which at first kind of comes across as this weird sort of tiny, chibi-ized Gundam. It's not like an SD Gundam where it's really small and has a giant head with oversized eyes, it's just a little smaller than the other kind, and it kind of looks like the classic RX-78-2 Gundam from the original Mobile Suit Gundam series. The unique gimmick here, of course, is that it has the ability to have all of these armor attachments go over its mecha body, and it can go through various transformations, whether it wants to be a melee fighter, a sniper, or maybe even just a giant artillery weapon. It's a pretty cool concept that has kind of been done in the past before, but of course Bandai is going to love this idea because it means they're going to be able to sell a lot of model kits. The other characters have some pretty interesting Gundams as well. There's a character by the name of Kazumi who considers himself kind of like this ridiculous over-the-top superhero. He wants to be like the leader of the group, and he has this Gundam which is known as the Knight Justice Gundam, which kind of looks like a knight with a giant freaking lance. That thing's pretty cool. I don't know much about his personality outside of the fact that he's just loud and brash and ridiculous. He's basically the Johnny Bravo of the freaking Gundam anime franchise. You have this super badass girl character who goes by the name of Mei, who's just... Well, there's really no other way to put it. She's just badass. She's really cool and edgy, kind of like Hiroto as well. And she's, interestingly enough, not using a Gundam, but using a mobile suit which is known as a Wadom, which was originally seen in Turn A Gundam. It's just unique to see something like that in the series, fighting amongst all of these other mobile suits. I'm not sure what her deal is going to be, but she's very, very mysterious, so I can't wait to learn about her. We also have Parvis, who is going to be our anthropomorphic furry-type character for the series. He kind of reminds me of Shariar from the previous season, because he has like these big, goofy, ridiculous ears and very well might even be related to the character. But all, out of all of the Gunpla, his is probably my favorite. It's like this dinosaur-like dragon Gundam, which has the ability to shoot explosive fireballs. And that's just unique in and of itself. Basically, aside from Kazumi, all of the main characters have Gundams, which are really strange and are sort of an extension of their characteristics, of them being a little weird, outcasts, and people who don't necessarily work well with other people. What is most interesting, of course, in this story is that not only are they forming a team together, but they're actually going to be the first who are going in and joining this, like, big campaign, which, unlike the previous series, where there was basically, like, a big tournament or they have to go on missions, here they actually have to compete this very long... Here they'll actually have to complete this very long campaign of going from mission to mission and seeing how the actual story is going to play out. That alone is interesting. Other than that, 
What's the rundown on the first two episodes of Gundam Build Divers Rerise? Yes, two episodes. The good folks at Gundam Info have actually decided to release the first two episodes at once. That's kind of an interesting thing about this show. It's actually going to be released on their YouTube channel, which means it's free. Go and check it out for yourself and let them know how they're doing with this brand new anime series. I can honestly say, though, that from the first two episodes alone, I think this is already better than Gundam Build Divers ever was. The characters are infinitely more more interesting and nuanced, and I can't wait to see how they're going to be developed as the series goes on, especially with the main character of Hiroto, who is just so much better of a character than Riku ever freaking was. Just the fact that he's so mysterious in the first place. I want to learn so much more about this guy, why he wants to find this girl, why he seems to have a massive chip on his shoulder, and what his relationship is with this one girl who goes by the name of Hinata in the real world. Could she somehow be related to all of his events in the Gunpla world? Does he seem to have something against the Build Fighter's group. Inquiring minds want to know, and that's what immediately makes him interesting. And that, along with the side characters, is really great. They all look like they're actually going to be something that's unique for the entire franchise, and I love that. But if you're coming into the series and hoping to get more of what the series is all about, which is fan service, don't worry, you're definitely going to get that. Whether it's the actual background characters themselves, the return of a lot of classic mecha, or even just callbacks to the original series itself. Did anyone else expect to see Tamara, the freaking cook, from the white base from the original Mobile Suit Gundam? I can tell you I sure as hell didn't expect to see that. They even had a callback to that old joke about them running out of salt. That's the type of thing that hardcore Gundam fans are totally going to eat up the entire time. And if you really loved the whole Patrick Colasar game from the last season where he pops up in every episode, you're gonna love it here too. It looks like he's gonna be popping up in pretty much every episode, which is fun because it makes you wanna pay attention to all of the things that are going on in the background. Basically, I really I really liked the first two episodes of Gundam Build Divers Rerise. Is it perfect? Not necessarily. It seems like a slightly better version of what we got in the last season, but there's certainly a lot of promise from the first two episodes of the series, and again, it's distinguishing itself. It's unlike any other Gundam that I have ever seen, and a lot of that is basically owed to the actual characters themselves, especially the anthropomorphic NPC characters. Those are really weird, and unlike anything that I've seen from any other Gundam show. As a hardcore Gundam fan, I'm definitely in it for the long haul. I always make a notion to watch every single Gundam anime when it releases and to review it when I get a chance and that's exactly what I'm going to do with this season. It's a show that I was really looking forward to and I really can't wait to see how it's going to blossom. As far as for the first two episodes of the series, I'm going to give both of them a three out of five. Really fun, kind of average, but still incredibly entertaining especially for Gundam fans. Who knows, the series has a lot of potential to become something really special and could very well maybe even reach the heights of the very first Gundam Build Fighters, but that remains to be seen. What I will say is, if you're a Gundam fan and you liked those previous Gundam Build Fighters spinoffs, then I highly recommend checking this one out. If you guys actually had an opportunity to watch these episodes, let's have a discussion about them in the comments section below. Did you have any favorite moments, favorite homages, callbacks, favorite mechas? Who's your favorite brand new character? Do you have any theories about Hiroto and that mysterious girl? And what do you want to see from the rest of Gundam Build Divers Rerise. Let's talk about it in the comments, guys. Thank you all for watching this review. I'll see you all next time, and as always, stay down now, baby.